Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share the latest word from William Brooks. The title is, Hear My Words of Comfort and Hear My Words of Power. And this word was posted May 8th, 2024. Hear the words of the Lord, even the words of Yeshua HaMashiach. Come to me, my bride. Come to me in readiness, for I am coming for you. Rest in me, my little ones, and sit at my feet. Hear my words of comfort, and hear my words of power. For I have given you a comforter, and in that comforter great power. Hear me and believe my words. Humble your pride to hear the voices of my messengers for they are lowly in heart. I haven't sent the mighty ones of this world to you. I haven't sent the ones of great riches and fame to you, though they pretend. No, I have sent you those the world has cast away in disdain, because they speak for me and my spirit is in them and cannot be removed. Marvel not that the world hates you, For the world hated me first, and the servant is not greater than his master. If they have hated me, so too have they hated you. But who are you that you should fear what man can do to you? Who are you that you should sit in darkness and trepidation when I have led you to my Father and your Father, even the great eternal God, for there is no other? I, even I, Christ Jesus, have seated you in the heavenlies and amongst all that are in the heavens, eagerly await, in great expectation for your soon arrival, my bride. For even the great and eternal God, even our Father, even Yahweh himself, who is from eternity to eternity, waits in great expectation for you. For very soon you will appear before his throne in great glory, and in his throne room you will be seated, for you will partake of my throne. The angels excitedly await you as well, my children, for there is joy in their presence when even one sinner repents. For so it is, but ye are come unto Mount Sion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Even some of these same angels are ministers for those who will inherit salvation, and that includes you, my bride. And I, even Christ Jesus, even I am longing for your presence before me, for I love you and longing for you. And soon we will be forever united by the marriage of the Lamb. I am your bridegroom, who longs for my bride, and I am coming for you. I have prepared for you many things, and many treasures and rewards of faithfulness are waiting for you. Soon you will come to your full inheritance in me, and you will have all eternity to realize the greatness and splendor of what I am gathering you to me to accomplish, accomplish, and what I will make of you, for you are a new creation, a new man created in me, and there are many, many things you will do for me, not only in my kingdom of righteousness, where I will rule the earth of righteousness for a day, but especially in the new heavens and new earth, will your greatness shine and you will forever be with me, for one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. I have a question for you, my loves. Even I, Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords and King of kings, hear me and consider my words, for the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Why do you devalue yourselves? I understand you are meek and lowly of heart, 
and that's from the new nature that I created within you. For natural man is ever prideful. But why do you consider yourselves worthless, asking yourselves, why would God even want to deal with you? And why would I offer you salvation when there are better candidates? Why do you sit there in depression, condemning yourselves when you sin? Why not dust yourselves off? Dust shall be the serpent's meat. Get up, arise, awake. Yes, you will all sin from morning to sunset. Is this something that Yahweh overlooked in his foreknowledge? What is it then? Did God, did God forget that you would sin after salvation? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. For in his plan of redemption, even his plans concerning me, even the great mystery of God, even all these things were crafted together in grace and mercy. Only accept my grace and mercy, for many of you self-flagellate instead. My children, I paid the price for your sins, and when you walk uprightly and honestly, and you sin because your flesh is corrupted, just confess the sin to me, and cleanse yourselves in my redeeming blood. For I am your redemption, and I have redeemed you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. There is nothing you can do to add to my completed works. For what more do I perfectly completed works need? When I said on the cross at my last breath, in that house of red earth, I was clothed at the time. It is finished. I left nothing undone. And when God accepts a finished, perfect sacrifice, let no one try to add anything, for those are works of vanity, even your subtle pride and your vanity, for on the earth is great vanity. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, for vanity speaks. And she lies to you saying you aren't good enough, and my sacrifice is incomplete. Therefore you must do something more to prove your worthiness when you repent before me. Verily I say, fruits meet for repentance are acceptable, but not self-condemnation, not self-loathing, not self-defeating mindsets of depression. For when you engage in these worthless practices of the flesh, you are unknowingly calling the truth a lie and attempting to reconcile your flesh to the Spirit. My children, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. For by my sacrifice you are reconciled to me, your Lord Jesus Christ, and I have reconciled you to God. For so is the great mystery of God of which you are part. Why do you doubt my words? Tell your flesh to keep quiet and silence the voices that are contrary to my sound doctrine. For I have prepared you for greatness. I have empowered you in my spirit of sonship, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. I have empowered and enabled you to do great things for me, and above all, I have commissioned you in me. Even in my love letters to my bride, even the letters I had Paul write to my church explain this in plain speech for you to understand and believe. For what did I tell my Corinthian church at the hand of Paul? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us given to us the ministry of reconciliation. My children, when you walk in my spirit and stay faithful to my precepts, I am creating you newly in me. For the old man of red earth is perishing, and both Jew and Gentile alike will be made one new man in me, even by my spirit of sonship, for I will save some of all. Now, if there be any man that hath not the Spirit of Christ, the same is none of his, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of your inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory." So walk in newness of life and understand that very soon my purchased possession will receive in full. You have the down payment of my spirit, and you will be clothed in new bodies, uncorrupted bodies, bodies that are powerful in scope and ability, even houses fit for a king. For you will be kings and priests before our God. So I have reconciled you to God, and there is no more enmity, and I have given you the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, but why would I do such a thing, you may ask? Listen, and I will tell you. And so the Corinthians continues their witness, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, that be ye reconciled to God. My children, you are my ambassadors and you hold a very prestigious position, for you represent me. For to be my ambassador is to represent the King of kings and Lord of lords to a dying world, and I am the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So please hear me. I have made you my ambassadors. I have reconciled you to God Almighty, Even El Shaddai, for his purposes will be done. I have given you the word of reconciliation, even words of eloquence fit for my ambassadors. For the word of God is from everlasting to everlasting, and I have given every one of you the ministry of reconciliation. This means I have authorized every soul who is born again of my mighty spirit as my powerful ministers, and the enemy fears you greatly and will run from you when you walk in my power, though he will try to whisper false words to you and even roar like a lion. But his putrid mouth has no teeth, for they were broken out by the power of my resurrection, and he will not recover. Ignore that toothless lion and focus on my voice, even the words of my word. In this great position of authority and power, for you move in my name, and my name is greater than all names, and only Yahweh is greater. I have placed you as my ministers and ambassadors, and I have prepared you and equipped you and clothed you in great power. My children, you do not understand the precepts of my words, for the apostate shepherds hired the Laodicean ministers to lie to you regarding the power and gift created in you at the new birth. For Paul explained the majesty of the power given in the spirit of sonship created in you. For he told the Corinthians, 
In spiritual things, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And again, there are, there are diversities of gifts, verily yet but one Spirit. And yet again, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Do not be ignorant of spiritual matters and understand the difference between a gift and and a manifestation, for they are not the same words in the text. I have given the gift of Holy Spirit, and in that that gift are manifestations. For what does my word say? But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Your lukewarm Laodicean ministers have echoed the lies Satan has told through the ages. Lies to make you believe that you are powerless, and lies to try and hide your true power in me. For your spirit is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So my manifestations of the spirit are listed as these, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and inter- and the interpretation of tongues. Before we proceed, put down your worldly commentaries and worldly lexicons and worldly concordances and quit letting them lie to you to redefine scripture to Satan's ends. In every spirit, in every man, is this potential to manifest power from on high. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. My children, why would you think these gifts when Scripture says they are manifestations? They have lied to you. Read my words and have faith in the words my translators chose for I was with them. You have all these abilities, and if you will to manifest them, I will work them in you to deliver the captives from Satan's grip into the glorious light of eternity. Ignore anyone who speaks contrary to these words and educate yourselves in my word. Quit worrying about how these things work for they do not work by way of eloquent words and happy thoughts. They work according to the need, by the desire of the man who must have the will to do my will, and especially by faith in me. For I will do mighty works by your hands, and I have sent you, my bride, for this is the last commission. I have given the gift of Holy Spirit. And in that gift are many other gifts, for what say the Ephesians? But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. And again from Romans, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So understand that you should think highly of yourselves, for you have been recreated in righteousness and true holiness even to show the glory of God himself, even the Father of lights, for you are the lights of the world. But think soberly, for you are not greater than your brothers and sisters who have been born of the same Spirit as you. For you all have these abilities, and you all have these gifts. For I have given gifts unto men, and I gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, 
There are many ministries I have given, my bride, and they are yours if you so desire. Ask of me, and I will work these ministries in you. But you have to have the desire. So covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. That more excellent way, my children, is God's unconquerable love. You should covet earnestly the best gifts, for I have empowered you. But to serve out of the love of God, to give the sacrifices of your lips and praise of your faithful heart in love, is superior. Give freely as you have freely received. Walk in this power because you love God. And you love me, Jesus Christ, and give freely of all that has been given to you and go forth, doubting nothing. My bride, so I have sent you to complete these works, and soon your courses will be finished. And when I gather you to me in the clouds, you will know, just as I knew on the cross, and you will be able to say, As I once said, it is finished. Soon you will enter into the pleasure of your Lord. I am coming for you very soon. I am longing for your presence before me. I am Christ Jesus, and I have created you newly in me. I am the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. I am he who has given gifts unto men. I am he who has given you the ministry and words of reconciliation. I am he who has sent you as my faithful ambassadors. I am that I am, so tell them I am has sent you. I am has sent me to you. I am he who sends you in this last time. And that is the end of this message. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.